All right, everybody, Terrence Pop here with another episode of Live from the Lair. And uh, let's go, Brandon. All right. Now, I've talked about this next subject a few times in my Lair videos uh, in the past. I served in the 2nd Ranger Battalion. I jumped into Panama in, uh, for the Panama Invasion, got wounded there and I uh, attended ranger school. I'm gonna tell you this it, with, you know, I'm not bullshitting you. Ranger school, when I went through, was the most grueling thing I ever did in my life. All right, it was, you know, it wasn't actually harder than special forces selection Selection was only 21 to 24 days, you know, when I went through. I was in Ranger school in pre-Ranger for four months and 15 fucking days. All right, when I went through Ranger school, there was four phases. There was Darby, Mountain Phase, Swamp Phase at England Air Force Base, and Desert Phase. That was in Dugway, Utah where they used to uh, test nuclear weapons and NBC shit. And uh, I'm going to tell you right now, like I, the first company I was assigned to when I went to the range school was Alpha Company. I think we start off the class with like 90 some odd people. First time graduates was in the like high teens, er, early 20s, something like that. It was like 22 people. There was no learning. It was just a sadistic, grueling beating where they didn't let you sleep and they hardly ever fucking fed you and they walked you to fucking death. That was ranger school when I went through. Now, they tell you it's a leadership school and all this other bullshit. When I went through, yes, leadership was, was definitely um, needed. But uh, it was... A fucking just as a nut buster man there was no uh, there was no value to it whatsoever other than the fact that uh you know you can condition your mind to take that the starvation deal with no sleep live out in the elements and just fucking drive the fuck on okay and from the reports i got from uh, ranger school and I'm, I'm going to read a letter from a former R.I. And there's some name dropping in there, but it is what it is. About what he witnessed when he was an R.I. for the 4th RTB. And that stands for the 4th Ranger Training Brigade. Oh, I didn't see you there. I'm reading this book. And it quite possibly is the best book ever written because <laughs> I'm in it! Winning! If you want to know the rate of return on dating whamming, you need to buy the book of numbers. There's a link in the description, you know, down there in the penis area. Me, Kazar! All right, now before we get started, you guys like, hey, you know, did you get me school? Uh, here we go. Here's my Ranger School photo right here. All right, now for those of you that don't know, this was, uh, I graduated class nine, 11 September, 1990. All right, and this is me right here. Now, as you could tell, I look like nothing but a concentration camp victim with a huge nose, and I just totally look like a mouth breather here, but uh, yeah, this, this was fucked up. As you can see here, everyone here is a skinny motherfucker. And if you are a big dude, or if you had a weight problem, when you got done with Ranger School, you are no longer a big dude, nor did you have a weight problem. If you could even make it to the end. Okay? That is fucking Ranger School. Alright, so let me see if I could find that letter... Okay, I was a ranger instructor at the 4th RTB before, during, and after the first class of female students went through ranger school. 
the class with Grist and J Xavier, is that Xavier or Gaver? I think it's Xavier. Those women that made it were hard, but they were not held to the same standards as the men who went before them, or even the men who were with them. All right, let that sink in for a minute. So what are they saying here? Is when they were going to ranger school, there were two different standards. There was one for the chicks and one for the dudes. That is fucking unacceptable right there. A big no, uh-uh. Big Army was able to deny, uh, deny uh, changes in standards by implementing... Let's see. Big Army was able to deny changes in standards by implementing changes long enough before the first female class. That way the correlation could be denied. Or by suddenly enforcing standards that have always existed or at least long enough but were never enforced. I graduated Ranger School in 2010. For as long as I can think of, and for most modern Ranger School graduates, the land navigation course has been four to five points in four hours. Now, you can do four points in four hours, but you're a shitbag. If you come from the regiment, you go to Ranger School, you need to get five out of five. I mean, it's very... It's an unspoken thing that, you know, any rangers who go to ranger school who come from the regiment are held to a way different fucking standard. Let's see. Two hours of darkness and two hours of daylight before the female showed up. Let's see. It, it was suddenly decided that the distance traveled during land navigation course should really afford you five hours. So they add an extra hour on. So we changed land nav to five hours instead of the historical four hours and did not change the number of points needed. When we did the PT test for the females, all of us instructors were being watched while we graded them. We were briefed slash warned ahead of time by our own leaders that if we looked like we were grading too harshly or we were getting a lot of attention from observers, brass and whatnot, then we would be replaced by another instructor and moved to a different spot in the pit. Okay, so when I did the PT test, like you literally showed up and you busted your ass. And I remember I took that PT test and they graded me hard. They did. Because normally back then I was doing like 99 to 100 push-ups in two minutes. And I think they graded me at 72. So they took off like 25, 30 some odd push-ups. And uh, when I was with the 425, we had sent an individual down to Ranger School. And he went through pre-Ranger. And then when he showed up to Ranger School, they failed him on the PT test. This particular individual was a master fitness trainer. So I get a call from him that, hey, I just failed the PT test at Ranger School. I'm like, okay. I immediately told him, because they do it in the morning. Go to the Master Fitness uh, people on Fort Benning and have them give you a PT test. And I, I called ahead and I set it up for them. Because when you've been in the Army long enough, you know people. You know, that's how NCOs work shit in the back channels. So he took the PT test at like 8, 9 o'clock in the morning for Ranger School and they failed him. At 2 p.m. At, at the Master Fitness compound, he took another PT test and scored a 291. He then flies back to Michigan. I have both PT cards with the notes from the RI. I fill out a DA-1559 uh, in regards, uh, which is an IG complaint. And my main thing is, you know, um, you know, it, it, not enforcement of the standards and uh, basically flunking National Guard guys because we this was a National Guard unit. And I sent it to a sergeant major down there. I don't remember his name. I get a call from the sergeant major and I say, hey, hey Sergeant Major, I'm just doing this as a courtesy. Uh, my next step is this is going to IG and I'm going to light everyone up down there. Because I have no fucking idea why my master fitness guy sent down to your ranger school who passed pre-ranger, failed the PT test, and then a few hours later takes it again at the master fitness uh, compound and almost maxes it. You are going to get fucked up. 
we came to an agreement that I could send my guy to the next class and he would be good to go. We just had to fuck with the orders and shit like that, but we got it done and I didn't have to file that IG complaint. So is there guys or instructors at Ranger School who are dicks when they do the grading? Yes, but they're dicks to everyone equally. All right, there isn't another standard for the fucking bitches. And that's what these women are. I'm sorry. I'm so pissed off about this. I'm beside myself. All of that happened. I'm pretty sure the weight for the Ruck March even changed from 45 pounds to 35. 45 to 35. When I was in the regiment, our rucksack that had to be packed 24-7, 365, with all of the shit that we needed for the missions that we were tasked at the time, the minimum weight was 45 pounds. In fact, it was like 52 when you put all the snap links and the goddamn ropes and the two two-quart canteens and all the other horse shit that you need. So what they're doing here is they're taking 10 pounds of ammo away from future assault rangers going into a war zone to make it easier so the women can fucking pass. Fuck that. Okay, we also had to start this whole practice of doing push-ups with the students when we smoked them or for whatever else the exercise was, which we never did before, which is correct. Okay, now I personally, when I was going through ranger school, there was a couple of RIs that took nothing but pure sadistic fucking pleasure for making us do PT for hours on end for no fucking reason other than to see people quit. And they would literally smoke us. And while they were doing it, they'd be singing this cadence, we're not stopping till three more people fucking quit. That sucked. And I don't have a problem with there being some kind of standard put in place to keep that from happening. But I do not agree that the RIs need to do all the same exercises as the fucking students. Yes, there needs to be a balance in there somewhere. But since I'm no longer in the system, I really don't have an answer. Okay, let's see uh, which never... Did. Okay, and when I was just, when I was questioned why were, we were shown the policies and how the rules had been in place for a long time. No, they haven't. So anything new we did for the females was justified by some policy that we were told existed before the females arrived. No. Even the layout, which traditionally is a gut check for the students and sets the tone for ranger school, was turned into a simple layout that you'd find in a gentleman's course. Now there is a big difference between a gentleman's course and a non-gentleman's course. The ranger school is not a gentleman's course. They have your boot on your neck the entire time you're fucking there. All right. Now, do I agree with how I, how my ranger school ran? No. Because when I got recycled in desert phase, I went from Alpha Company to Charlie Company. It was completely different fucking school. When I went to Charlie Company, you actually learned shit. They fucking gave a fuck about you. This sadistic fucking beatdown stopped. You know, but when I went over to Charlie Company, I had 21 major minuses. 21 fucking major minuses. And most of them were because I fucking have a big mouth and I've gave, you know, smart remarks. Shocker. I got a, I got a clean slate and I was able to squeeze by. Barely. It was fucking that tough. Usually, we have people quit during the layout because everything is so frantic, they're flustered, and we're smoking them for being too slow or not following instructions. Actually, they smoke you. No matter how fast you are, you're never fast enough, and there's always somebody out there who smokes you for not following instructions, and it's you know, most of the time it's just horse shit. Okay, now this is just mainly a psychological thing, and uh, the snowflakes of today are going to buckle underneath this because, you know, in my opinion, they've been... They've been raised soft. Okay, by now we're being told that the point of the layout is just to see if they got their 
got the right stuff. Get it over quickly. No smoking, hardly any yelling, no crying or quitting. Very disappointing. Suddenly, Ranger stakes didn't really matter. Students could not be dropped for performing poorly in any of the tasks. When it came to recycling, students get sent home when they fail the same thing twice. That's how it goes in every, every army school I've ever been to. If you fail something, you get a second chance. If you fail it, bye-bye, you're done. It was like that in Battlestaff, PLC, uh, a B-knock, A-knock, everything. Everything was like that. All right, because, you know, you can fuck it up one time, get a retrain, or maybe a day after, do it again. When I was in the, in the Q course for the Special Forces, I failed the land nav the first time, and I took it again 36 fucking hours later. And I passed it. So, yeah, this is horse shit. All right. And the what they're saying here with the ranger stakes, these are a bunch of, like, tasks that rangers are required to do. Usually you get a block of instruction for everything they want you to do. They give you a, t a little bit of time or time to train on it, and then you fucking do it. All right? This is important. And one of the big nut rolls we had in, in Mountain Phase was the knot tying. You had to learn, I think it was 11 or 12 different knots. You got tested on it. And yes, people got thrown out for not being able to tie fucking knots. That's how, that's how it used to fucking be. Okay, you need a good excuse to stay in Darby after failing patrols twice. Okay, when, typically, if you fail patrols, um, you're offered, if they think you're salvageable, at least back in the day, they gave you a recycle. I, I got one myself. All right, but I had guys, I knew guys that recycled one time in every fucking phase. Hell, they should have PCS to Ranger School. They were there that long. But it happens. Oh, uh, let's see. The females were allowed to stay and repeat Darby for a third time without any sort of extenuating circumstances. Uh, because, well, there is an excuting uh, a, a circumstance there. Vagina. Okay, the recycle group that contained the females was given a lot of training and, and classes during recycle. I don't see a problem with that. The, uh, that most others did not get. Now, when I recycled, um, I did do a little bit of retraining and getting my head right to do it again when I did, you know, desert the second time. Okay, so I don't really disagree you know, I disagree with being, you know, recycled for three fucking times. All right. That is unacceptable. You should only get one recycle per phase. That's fucking it. If, if not, I mean, it, it's just ridiculous. You're, you're watering down the training standards and you're ruining it for the, all of the people in the future. Because when these standards get lower enough, you know, those guys... That you know, you still you know those are fucking rangers. It's not going to mean anything. It's going to be an, another fucking check in the box you got for your career. You're, you're not you know getting your mind right. You're not conditioning your body, your soul, whatever. Because ranger school when I went through was a fucking gut check, man. Every waking fucking moment. Okay, let's see. Uh, that most others did not recycle. Life is mostly details. Yep. Yep, I was chained to a lawnmower. There was even a Ranger School first sergeant, Daniel Moss of Charlie Company, and then HHC, who was texting and calling one of our company's instructors during a graded patrol and begging him and telling him to give the females he was grading a go. So you have guys running patrols. In the sticks, you have a first sergeant in the rear calling the RIs and telling them to let these chicks fucking pass. All right, first sergeant Daniel Moss, you probably retired to sergeant major. I'm going to tell you here on the internet, fuck you, you fucking coward. 
the big C word, telling him to just give her a go and send her on to Mountain Phase and let them deal with her. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's a very common attitude in the military, in all branches. To send them along, it's somebody else's fucking problem. See, First Sergeant Moss just wanted to be the first company to successfully, successfully send a female forward. Many things about this were covered up. After the class containing the first two female students graduated, I spoke to some of the male students from the class when it came time to do peer evaluations, which is a huge part of progressing forward in ranger school. I saw lots of guys get peered out because they were assholes. All right, you get peered twice, you're gone. This is another basically portion of the whole ranger school experience that they are being shielded from. Because guess what? If you're not carrying your weight, if you're not doing your fucking job, if you're bitching the entire time and you can't keep up, you're going to get fucking peered. Every single time. And it exists for a reason. Because the RIs cannot see everything. But the people you're walking next to in your team and platoon will know exactly who you are by your fucking performance. That's why peering is fucking important. All right, because you can fool an RI once or twice, but you're not fooling an entire platoon of guys who are with you 24-7 walking around, you know, drinking the same shitty-ass water and starving and not sleeping. I'm getting worked up here. The male students were told to not even rate the female students because it would not count anyway. There you go! They just gave it away to these bitches. They don't fucking deserve it. Fuck them. God, this is infuriating. So the female students could not be paired the same as male students. Students end up getting moved to different squads, platoons, companies, recycled, or even dropped from the course based on their peer evaluations. Boom! Right from the horse's mouth. Male students also told me about times when a female could not hack it with the machine gun or some other heavy gear and changes or accommodations would be made. Let me tell you, when I went to PLDC, I had two females attached to my squad. Everyone took their turns doing their fucking shit. One of the females tried, I mean, legitimately tried. She didn't succeed at everything, all right? But you give it a go, you can't, I don't expect a soldier to be 100%. It's not happening. The other female, literally, when it was her turn to carry the M60 machine gun, she threw it in the mud and said she wouldn't. I got pissed off. I checked her ass. She fell in the mud. And I almost got get kicked out of the course. But the sergeant major and I came to an understanding. And fuck that bitch. So that means you can't carry the heavy gear. You can't carry fucking ammo. What are you going to do when you got to carry your ammo, these fucking heavy ass weapons, and you're carrying a goddamn, you know, a protective vest with plates? Because that fucking thing weighs 17 to 22 fucking pounds. On top of the 45, oh, 35 pound ruck set. That's 50 some odd pounds. Where's your ammo? Where's your fucking weapons? It's fucking stupid. This is insane. Uh, let's see. We also cannot overlook the fact that the females that showed up for the first class received more prep uh, than any make student has or will ever be afforded. All right. Now, when I was in the National Guard, we would send our people to a pre-ranger that was run down at Benning for the National Guard people nationwide. They were there between two and six weeks before they started their next class. All right. That's a lot of time and training right there. So he's saying, this R is saying that these women received more training than that. I don't have a problem with anyone being trained and prepared to go to any fucking school or war zone or what have you. So I can't fault them for this. The, what I fault them for 
is allowing them to pass, look the other way, and destroy this school moving forward for everyone. Okay, uh, after all the females show up they, and they all fail, the response from the government representative was, well, see what, what needs to be changed. There was always going to be a female with a ranger tab. That was decided before any of this even started. Anyone at RTB, which stands for Rainy Training Brigade, who spoke out uh, about this was crucified and buried. There are more examples but it has been a little bit since it all happened. I do not remember everything. I am not really I'm not releasing this RI's name. I don't even know if he's still in. Uh, like this was he went to Ranger School in 2010. I would say he's probably done by now. In my professional opinion. Now let's look over here at this one. This happened in 95 or 94. I actually talked to one of the RIs that was involved in this fucking fiasco. Okay. They did everything correct. All right. They got the weather reports. They ran it by their chain of command. Everything was good. The risk assessments were signed off. They went into the swamp. The weather conditions changed. Four rangers die of hypothermia. Which is fucking really easy. You know, most people are like, oh yeah, you get cold, you just warm up. Listen, the human being is a very weak animal. Other than the fact we have larger brains and we can, you know, manipulate our environment around us uh, to become the top of the food chain. You take all of that away, you're out in the elements, it drops below 55 degrees, you get wet. And whatever, you, you've, you're a couple steps behind, you're going down with hypothermia. And if nobody's around, you're fucking dead. You're, it's just plain and simple. You're deader than, you're, you're just deader than dead. Back in the day, people died at range school all the time. People fell off cliffs, you know, parachute accidents, heat stroke. I mean, it's fucking tough. You're training guys for combat. Combat doesn't play. Combat doesn't care if your rucksack's 45 fucking pounds or 35 fucking pounds. All right? If your rucksack's 45 fucking pounds, you better have 10 pounds of fucking ammo if you're in a combat zone. That's roughly eight magazines. All right? Not my guys in Iraq carried 13 mags, two frags, a knife, their main weapon, and if they were assigned a pistol, they carried that as well. Everywhere they went, and I did the same thing. I got yelled at for carrying grenades, the whole works. But my men carried that. That's what I walked around in. That's just the way it is. All right. I'm not going to go through that whole article. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. Now, here we go. This is an actual article here from a one of our, I think it was the senator. I don't know if he's still in her, uh, up at the up at the hill or not. But he actually talked about uh, the Ranger School. He brought it up how it was fucking, uh, the standards were fudged. He talked to a bunch of RIs. He was stonewalled by the Army. I have no idea why those officers that were stonewalling people in our, our elected government, why they weren't fired, or gomarred, and sent out. I have no fucking idea. But typically, back when I was, you know, a, a hua. If a senator showed up and started asking questions, everyone's asshole in the general vicinity slammed shut, and those fuckers told that senator what he wanted to fucking know. All right? So look at these. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, whatever. Get the fuck out of here. Look at that. Get the fuck out of here. That's bullshit. And they had like some 38-year-old woman, a mother of two, graduate ranger school. That's fucking impossible. Not by the standards I went through. No fucking way. Yeah, so you guys, it's on the Daily Caller. You can look it up. You do a search for Standards of Ranger School. This is on the first, uh, I think it's the first two pages of the results. All right, now let's go through here. This is, the, you know, this is the current Ranger School standard. All right, they go through the whole deal. Week one, 
week two, week three. All right, this is the fourth RTB, fifth, and the sixth. Now, this is the swamp phase at Fort Rudder. I I don't know where that is. I went to England Air Force Base in Florida. Fucking sucked. That was the hardest phase. If I had to recycle Florida phase, I wouldn't have made it. That's how hard it was. I was so fucking weak and fucked up after Florida phase. I could, I could barely dig a hasty fighting position. Because I caught dysentery and I walked around with fucking diarrhea for th two weeks. Just drinking insane amount of water. You know, eating the salt packets out of my MRE. And I had some of my buddies give me their salt packets so I could stay hydrated. And keep my electrolytes up. Because I was shitting my fucking brains out. The medic would show up. I would drink the whole bottle of Melanta every other fucking day. So look at this. You got the Ranger School Fiscal Assessment. Combat Water Survival. Land Navigation. Ranger School Tactical ma uh, tactical Tasks. 12 Foot Road March. Now they say it's uh, 61 days, 51 days of field. Uh, 15 high risk days. 26 days patrolling. Which... I did probably a consider I did a probably 15 days more than that actually more since I recycled. A seven knots tested uh, back when I went through it was like 11 basic mountaineering operations which I fucking hated. Listen, I don't know how people climb mountains for a hobby and for fun because when I did the basic mountaineering my body was wrecked. I had bruises everywhere. I scraped up my elbows and knees and hands. I literally climbing those fucking ropes and, and cliffs and shit. I ripped out fingernails. Fuck that. You got to do two obstacle courses. The, Dor the Darby Mile, which sucked, but it is what it is. Okay, we did five jumps, not three. Air assault, you know, four air assaults. We, we flew around in helicopters a lot. I don't even know if they're, they even attach a number to it. Four boat movements. Sounds about right. Two to three uh, graded patrols per phase. Now, when I went through, it was you need to graduate it, you needed to be 50 50. Which means if you had a total of six patrols, you needed to have three goes, and one of them needed to be a PL go, which stands for platoon leader go. Now, either you're the actual platoon leader or you're the, or you're the platoon sergeant. That counts as a PL go. And usually that, that went to enlisted guys. So when I went through, I was a 50-50, barely fucking made it. Now the high risk training is airborne operations, training in and on water and demolitions. Big deal. Got it. Okay, so here we have the prolonged low intensity physical activity, 65 to 90 pounds of equipment. I don't think those women carried 65 to 90 pounds of equipment. Tactical foot movements of 200 plus miles. I could easily believe that because I probably clocked a lot more than that when I went through. Sleep deprivation. Let's talk about sleep here. There was times where we were so sleep deprived. You get to the point where you can't rationally think or do, th or do anything. There were three different occasions once in mountains, once in Florida, and once in desert phase when I was in Alpha Company, where we were so ragged and run down, they literally called everyone in, told us to sit down, take off our shit, take out our poncho liner, and go to sleep. And they let you sleep for four hours and then they wake you up and you're on the move again for another 48 to 72 hours. That's it. If you needed to sleep, you catch a little bit here and there. But, you know, the only time they let us sleep when I went through, they let you were supposed to get four hours of sleep before you did the airborne training and before the live fires. That's it. Period. All right, food consumption, 2,200 calories a day or two MREs. We got one MRE a day and no time to fucking eat it. So, 
There was a lot of times, and I got a couple major minuses for this, where I have to eat while we're fucking moving. So they're getting two MREs a day. They're getting over. And from what, what I'm hearing from some of the RIs, they're getting four to six hours of sleep every fucking night. That's horseshit. Okay, environmental impacts, bending mountain swamps, blah, blah, blah. Graded leadership positions in mock combat patrols. Uh, consistent opposition forces probing. That happened a lot. There's all kinds of op, op for. Post-phase peer evaluations. So in the letter I just read you, these women were not post-phase evaluated. They didn't carry 65 to 90 fucking pounds. They got two meals a day. Well, everyone got two meals a day and they got to sleep. This is not the same range of school I went to. I'm sorry. Okay, and we're talking about the, you know, the ranger instructor. He got, you know, he looks very typical. The stick. He's got the swallow me sword on. Blah, blah, blah. Gotcha. Average eight years time in service, two to four years leadership time in combat units physically fit. Now, if you're in the special operations in your mid-20s, you meet all of this. Okay, you need to be school qualified, unit commander validated. You had to be a squad leader or a platoon sergeant. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't have a problem with any of this. Okay, you know, in theory, this is for for the, the cadre. By the time they get there, they have all this. They're good to go. Okay, uh, ranger attrition. These are the stats of the attrition. Who made it? Who did it? We lost a lot of people in the PT test. And here's the tactical tasks. It looks about looks about right. Land, nav Land navigation also got a lot of guys. Okay, ranger tactical task. Yeah, 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 foot march. And we lost a lot of people on some of those long movements. There was a couple times where we were coming out of the fucking field, road marching back. And I think one of the times we literally do our two weeks of patrolling... We're beat down. We're marching out. It's like 18 fucking miles. Three guys fell out. They got recycled. I can almost guarantee you that didn't happen to any of the females. Okay, now this is the LURS course. Uh, I had a lot of guys go to this when uh, I was in the LURS unit. Very similar. The ranger school. I, they should just send them to a fucking ranger school. That's it. All right, so I, I, this is just my pet peeve of all the fucking horse shit that's going on today. And, you know, I'm a little upset that uh, we had a lot of officers and NCOs who just rolled over and said, hey, fuck it, send them forward. It's somebody else's fucking problem. In my opinion, that's a lack of integrity. And that speaks volumes to the motherfuckers that allowed this to fucking happen. Fuck you, you pieces of fucking shit for allowing this to happen.